Turn the lights on. Oh, hey, I almost didn't see you there because of all this refracting light. Today we're going to be talking about light, and light does a lot of things. Uh, there's th four ways light interacts. It refle reflects, refracts, scatters, and absorbs. And today we're going to be talking about reflection and refraction mainly. Uh, right now we're going to talk about light and how um, uh, reflection and refraction uh, compare and interact with each other. So reflection, uh, that is basically how light bounces off a material and it bounces off at exactly the same angle. So we have a material right here and if the light bounces going at an angle, let's just call it theta one, uh, it's going to bounce off at theta two and in the end they will be exactly the same. Uh, so that's how reflection works, that's how you're able to see me is off the reflection of light. Then we'll talk about refraction. And refraction is a little bit different. Uh, we have to talk, we have to, first we're gonna look at Snell's law and it interacts with each other because all light isn't reflected. Some is like taken at different angles and stuff like that. So right now we're gonna have as if this was air and this was water. So if uh, a thing of a beam of light was going into, the, uh, into a thing of water uh, and this is the center line, it's going to get closer to that center line because of refraction and because of Snell's law. All right, in this experiment, we're gonna be testing Snell's law, which describes the impact of angle of incidence on the angle of refraction. And as you notice, when the pencil is in the center of the cup and is equal to the normal, it's pretty much straight up and down. The angle of refraction is the exact same, it's equal to the normal. But as we increase the angle of incidence, the angle of refraction decreases and appears more towards the normal than it is out of the water. This is due to the fact that water has a higher index of refraction because light travels slower through water and when it comes to our eyes we see it a lot differently because since the light's traveling slower it's going to appear a lot more towards the normal than it would when it's in just air. So looking at a window at night is an easy way to understand how light reflects and refracts with a change in medium. It's a good example of Snell's law in a, on a pretty big scale. You can see the reflection when you see yourself in the window, and you can see that light is also refracted through by looking out and seeing that light hits the ground. You can also see that the light is absorbed in the window because it's less bright when it goes out. People also control their reflection, refraction, and absorption in one common way by tinting their windows. So you're also able to change the medium to change how light uh, reacts. Hello everyone, so today I'm going to be talking about how reflection and refraction create rainbows. So when it is raining outside, we have a water droplet, as seen right here, and we have sunlight entering the water droplet from right here. And so sunlight's gonna be coming in the form of white light. And so when the white light hits the water droplet, it's gonna undergo refraction. And so this refraction is gonna disperse in multiple colors. So we have the whole colors of the spectrum, but each color has a different wavelength and this is gonna impact how it disperses through the water droplet. So as you see here, we know that red has a very high wavelength. And since it has a high wavelength, it is in turn going to have a very low index of refraction. And so since it has a low index of refraction, it is going to bend away from the normal. Additionally, we see violet, and violet has a very small wavelength. And since it has a small wavelength, it is going to have a very high index of refraction. And since it has a higher index of refraction, we're going to see here how it's going to bend more towards the normal. As you can see here, my norm was drawn right here and it's perpendicular to the water droplet. And so once it goes through here, it's going to undergo refraction. And then when it hits this back wall right here, it is going to undergo reflection. And so it's going to reflect off of the back of the water droplet. It's going to come back and it's going to undergo refraction again when it comes out of the water droplet. And so our observer is going to be um, very low to the ground and the rainbow is going to be very, very high up. So it's going to be looking at a very steep angle. And so when there's a steep angle and we have all these water droplets 
which are undergoing everything that I described up here with the refraction and the reflection, we're going to see that it's going to come in multiple raindrops. So what the observer sees is it's going to see this red um, ray of light from droplet, one of these droplets right here, and then it's also going to see the violet ray light, but from another raindrop. And so you might ask what's happening to this violet and this red that are down here. Well, with these, the red um, ray of light is actually too low for the observer to see. It goes um, way below than the observer can see. And then the violet ray is going to be way higher. So the observer is not going to be able to see that either. And so what ends up happening is it's, the observer only sees this red um, to violet color of light that's in the sky. And that is why we see rainbows. Thank you for watching.